Hello, Nick Ritter here with another Cavalry tutorial. This is a project file walkthrough. This is part of a project that I'm doing for work. The idea is that we have style guides for graphics, like still graphics, where we indicate like font sizes, uh, which point and which weight to use where, color palettes, you've seen them before. So I thought, why don't we have one of those for motion? Maybe they're out there, but I haven't seen them. We've got a client that is very picky about making sure that all their graphics stay consistent, which surprisingly is very unique. We wanna make sure we give the client what they want and make sure they're happy. So I thought, why don't we just record all these things down to what the motion curves look like. And so as part of that, I'm making this tool here in Cavalry so I can automate some of the creation of these animation curves based off like spreadsheet data. So I thought today I'll show you this graph editor rig that I came up with. It is not perfect, <laughs> it's not done. I'm sure it'll be a work in progress for a little bit. Let's take a look. If I move these handles, you can see the curve reacts to the handles movement like this. I have it constrained right now, so it only goes uh, left and right, not up and down. That's part of the future iterations. But you can take these keyframes and move them around. Currently, the handle doesn't move with it, still figuring all that stuff out. So I'm just going to pick this apart, kind of go layer by layer. So the first thing we'll take a look at is this S curve in here. That is done with a simple line shape. That's just right here in the tools panel. Now, if you click on this and click and drag, it creates an editable shape. So what you have to do is you have to hold down Alt or Option and then click on the tool. And then you get this line and it shows up as basic line. What the basic line does that's unique from the other curves I've seen in Cavalry is it has this line type drop down and you can choose Bezier. And this is the thing that creates the Bezier curves. All these yellow numbers are connected to things, but I can move these at the Y of the start offset. You can see what that does to our curve here on the end offset too. And then all of my strokes except this one are connected to my thick stroke value down here. Cause I knew I wanted them to all stay the same except for the S curve in here. Uh, looking at the start position, that's connected to K1, so keyframe one, point two. And then there's keyframe 2.2. Point 0.2 is the diamond shaped keyframe. This might not be the best way to name it, but that's fine. And then uh, K1.2 is the other key here. Okay, so looking in here, uh, these are just null objects. It has this little plus icon. And within that, I have my key shape here. So I can open up my key shape and let's just go wild with the size. Now, this is a really cool thing. Uh, the shape's size changes on both. And the way that is done is I created this key uh, shape first. And then I right clicked on it and clicked create alias. And so that opened up this shape here. And you can see there's several of these parameters that are green. And the ones that are not green are copied over from the original shape. And some of these parameters have an option where you can right click and switch alias state, which means that that's another parameter that it'll copy data from the original shape. I'm just gonna switch that back to the way it was. Some of the parameters don't have that option in the alias. So if I right click on position, you'll see that the switch alias state is gone. The skew is that way, let's see, pivot, rotation, scale is that way as well. Then if we look under K1.1 and K2.1, we have our ellipse shape. So the little circle at the very end. The way I did the constraint, from K1.2, I copied over the Y position to K1.1. So they'll always be the same height, but not the same X position. So just a quick and dirty constraint setup there. And then this is a little half-baked idea that I'll flesh out as I go along. But this indicates how many pixels away this point is from this point. The handy spot for me, I want to set it up so that it tells me how many frames I am away from that keyframe. I'm still figuring that out. Now, there's a couple different nodes we haven't looked at yet. The first one I'll take a look at is the bar nodes here. Next, we'll take a look at this K1 bar. It's the same node as K2 bar. And what it is, it's the points to curve shape. So I'll click on this. And what it does is it sets four different points for you. By default, you can always add more if you want. And then it creates a curve between those points. You can have Bezier on or you can have it off. In the case of these lines, I really just wanted them straight. So K1 bar and K2 bar, that's the line that connects the diamond to the circle. And to delete these points, you can right click on any one of these and delete selected attribute and then you have less points. So what I did with these is I connected my K1.1 to K1.2, so that's the keyframe and the circle. I connected those to points one and two in my points to curve nodes. You can see right here, K1.1, K1.2. So that way it would be a line that would connect the two points. So I can toggle this off and on. You can see what that does. And then I use the keyframe shape here as a mask on K1 bar. So if I go to the mask tab, 
It comes from the key alias shape. I guess I didn't rename that to anything useful. And it's just on subtract here. Now we can go to add so we can see what it looks like without the mask in this case, but subtract is where I wanted it. And next let's take a look at these K1, K2 length nodes. All these are our path length nodes. So these take a path, just like our K1 bar, K2 bar, and it measures how long it is. That's it. This is really the magic sauce that makes the Bezier handles work. Optionally, you can use the measure node. You can measure between two different objects based on their pivot or their position. All you do is you just connect the layer in first target and second target, and then it gives you the measurement, and that's what you can output. Um, so here's where that becomes useful, is let's go back to our curve this is our, our S curve here. So in our curve shape, we have our start offset that I showed you and the end offset. So I connected these length nodes to one of the offsets. And we can look on here and see which one. So this one is connected to the K1 length, so this one. And then this node was actually connected to K2 neg. And that's right here. I'll open this up. All this is is a math node, and I multiplied by negative one, so I just took the inverse of the given number. What I did here is the K2 length node right here. It calculates out to 615.622. I fed that value, just like this, into first, 615.622, same thing. And then I fed this final value in from here to end offset, just like that. Now as I move this null object, it changes the length of the path, and the length of the path changes the intensity of the Bezier handles. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Feel free to offer up suggestions for videos you want to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Thank you.